Greetings, Midnight Viewers, and welcome to Father Malone's Weekly Roundup. I am Father Malone, but you're not here for me. You're here for my delicate and delightful co-host, Miss Ripley Jean. Say hello, Ripley. <laughs> that was hello, Ripley. She said hello, Ripley, because she thinks she invented that joke. Okay, tell me a new one. How did the podcast host waste everyone's time? Okay, good one. In our never-ending quest to remain relevant and garner some of that sweet, sweet MCU fallout audience. We're going to start with a brand new bald-faced appeal to new listeners with something currently in theaters. That's right. Tonight's episode is a Wolverine and Deadpool extravaganza. Not necessarily in that order. Well, kind of. That's right. Too much testosterone. Or too much men in general. But we are still going to be doing three topics, three separate things, but they're all tied in because they're all... Deadpool and Wolverine related. Shall we embark copulatingly? That's a let's fucking go joke. Anyway. I know I turn everything into a joke, but I care. And I want to use that for something important. I waited a long time for this team up. In my world, you're well regarded. You were an X Man. Fuck that, you were the X Man. The Wolverine. He's a hero in my world. Yeah, well, he ain't shit in mine. This god used to beg me to wear this suit. So it's Doran, the beast. But I couldn't have him thinking I wanted to be there. And it was too late. It's only nine people, but my entire world is right here in this picture. And I have no idea how to save it alone, but you, you know how to save him. Whoever you think I am. You got the wrong guy. You were always the wrong guy. Till you weren't. Are you ready? Fuck yeah, I'm ready. I'm the Wolverine. Stop it. It took more than 20 years to get Hugh Jackman into the comic book accurate outfit. Was it worth the wait? You're fucking right it was. I'm going to go light on spoilers, but I'm sure you've heard that this film is a cameo fest. And it is featuring a lot of Marvel characters who didn't survive the 20th century Fox merger if they had even been alive up until that point. Some of these cameos, by the way, are great, but the film is just an excuse to get the team up that comic book fans have been clamoring for and the one they deserve, really. Now, I'm sure you've heard that the plot is thin and there isn't much story to compensate. You heard correctly. Could all the film's failings be solved with an additional rewrite? Just one? Oh my, yes. Is the film packed with too many characters and plot threads from other Marvel properties that will leave new viewers totally confused? Oh my God, yes. But none of that matters because this is what a great series or a graphic novel should be. Also, the argument that most viewers don't have enough background because they haven't seen every Marvel property, so they feel lost. Well, welcome to the world of comic books, you bunch of fake fucking nerds. These characters have been around for decades. They've met hundreds of other characters. They've been through hundreds of other adventures. Haven't read all the back issues? Tough shit. Buy the ticket, take the ride. I had a blast with Deadpool and Wolverine. I laugh more at this film than any purported comedy I've seen in the past few years. But does it restore the MCU to its former glory? Hell no. <laughs> Nothing's going to do that. Especially not a move of total desperation like recasting Robert Downey Jr. as Doctor Doom. I'm not maligning Downey's thespian abilities or anything. It's just that there is a perfect person to play that role. That actor's name? Any other actor but Robert Downey Jr.? If you're going to recast from within the MCU, how about you do right by Mads Mikkelsen? 
Anyway, Deadpool and Wolverine, I don't think any encouragement or discouragement is going to change anyone's opinion about whether or not they're going to see this movie. Just the same, I do recommend it. It ends up being a much better version of Quantum Mania. Not a perfect version. I doubt they're going to get there until they make a Midnight Suns movie. But it's a step in the right direction. Now let's hope we don't have to wait another six years to see Deadpool again. Go see Wolverine and Deadpool, Deadpool and Wolverine, whatever it's called. You know what it is. <laughs> Did you not listen to anything I just said? There's no way you would like this movie more if you had seen everything that came before it. <laughs> no, that rewatch would last days. Absolutely not. You're lucky I snuck you into the theater to see this. Uh, oh, yeah. That, speaking of that, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine is only playing in theaters right now. It's not streaming. It's on nothing. You actually have to go see it if you want to see it. Uh, it's going to be a couple like that. I know this. The show, the idea behind the show is to recommend stuff that's free that you can get right now. But lately, I seem to be recommending things you actually have to pay for. But I wouldn't recommend them if they weren't worth it. Okay, now, Ripley Jean, what is your recommendation this week? What would you pair with Deadpool and Wolverine? Are you fucking kidding? Yes, it has Ryan Reynolds. But we just did this last week. It was a superior version. Oh, okay. Well, here's Ripley's pick. Houses here are way out of our price range. When the business is good, we are going to have the this greatest house. It's beautiful. This is an amazing house. You are going to love it. Holy. This is the deal of a lifetime. So, what's the catch? There was a crime, a, a murder. In the house? And several people, a family... Within the house. Well, houses don't kill people. <laughs> to a perfect house and to a perfect family. Who are you talking to? The girl who lives in my closet. And what's her name? Jody. What's the matter? Just seeing things, I guess. Why don't you come back to bed? I oh, can't sleep. Oh, this is my mind. There was a family lived here some time ago. They had a similar problem. I'm living in their house. We need to get out of here. Just pack up and go. Everything we have is in this house. It's okay, Mommy. Jody won't hurt you. But the man will Once again, the Amityville Horror. This one is from 2005. The early aughts, I don't know that you can pinpoint the exact moment, but it was definitely in this period that everything seemed to freeze in Hollywood and we're still dealing with it to this day. IP is all that matters. Intellectual property. As long as we have a known property, something that has even the slightest name recognition, why should we make anything original? In this case, the company was and continues to be, I guess if you're a fan of those A Quiet Place movies, you can thank them. But anyway, the, the company is Platinum Dunes and the clairvoyant genius who decided to just grab a whole bunch of properties and remake them cheaply without any effort at all was Michael fucking Bay. From 2003 until 2010, they released remakes of The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The Amityville Horror, The Hitcher, Friday the 13th, and Nightmare on Elm Street. And those were all great. If I'm being honest, I actually like the Texas Chainsaw Massacre and the Friday the 13th remakes, but I suspect that's because they were both directed by Marcus Nispel, who actually understood that 
he was making horror movies, horror being first. They somehow seem to rise above the usual dreck. And speaking of dreck, the Amityville horror. In the last episode, I mentioned that the the actual real quote unquote story that uh, Amityville is based on uh, is totally fabricated. The the whole Lutz family and, and the house from hell. So these filmmakers took that as a license to yarn spin wildly, uh, although they they kept everything factually based. Uh, I noticed that they that Platinum Dunes had a habit of if they could throw up a a that's based on a true story for all of their features. They even did it with the Hitcher. Technically, not technically, they they put up statistics about how many people are killed out on the highways implying that it's because of murderous lone serial killers and not because, you know, people fell asleep and drove onto a fucking billboard. Here's what the brain trust over at this Amityville came up with. You know, the uh, whole Indian burial ground and or depository for the mentally ill that the house was built on, the one that the actual local tribe in the area denied existed. Yeah, that gets front and center placement here. And since we've already been ripping off Poltergeist, let's rip off Poltergeist 2. We'll throw in an evil reverend character, Reverend Ketchum, K-E-T-C-H-U-M, Ketchum, which kind of sounds like catch them. So that becomes something, or really nothing. An old Indian burial ground and an evil reverend. Fellas, we're doing our best as viewers. Could you meet us halfway? If there's any improvement over the original... Uh, it's that this one has moments of familial bliss at the beginning. In the original, James Brolin's character was a miserable prick from the moment we met him. Uh, at least here, Ryan Reynolds is charming, and you, you can see why the kids like him. You can see why the wife likes him. And when that nice guy starts slowly descending into madness, there's a, there's actual dread that that comes from it. His performance is great overall, but that's it. That's my. That's the only thing recommending this movie. <laughs> Ripley is recommending it, but I am dissuading you. Do not see the Amityville Horror. It is freely available on Max right now. You could stream it right now. Don't do it. <laughs> oh, stop. It's not great. You know it's not great. Continue our delightful meal of Deadpool and Wolverine. Uh, I'm going to offer my pairing now. This one is actually from the same neighborhood of early 21st century from 2006 my choice could actually be considered an anthology and given that it will no doubt be the subject of a future anthologies attack here at midnight viewing this one stars hugh jackman and rachel vice this is the fountain <laughs> Forever. 
The Fountain was written and directed by Darren Aronofsky, who also made Pi, Requiem for a Dream, The Wrestler, Black Swan, and The Whale. And I happen to think this is his masterpiece. The entire film is a contemplation of death, and more specifically, its inevitability and how we cope with it, and more importantly, how we fear it. It's told in three stories, each featuring Hugh Jackman and Rachel Weisz, playing effectively the same characters, but different because they're from different time periods. The first one is about a conquistador in the 16th century who's searching for the fountain of youth to save his love who is dying. The second features Jackman as a doctor in the present day who is trying to find a cure for cancer because his wife is slowly dying of cancer. And the final gives us a space traveler who is journeying through the universe toward a dying star because he believes that when it goes supernova, it will restore the life of his slowly dying love. So the film's span is about a thousand years, give or take, which sounds daunting, but the film is so lyrical and so lovely that you won't feel a bit of the length or the transitions from scene to scene, story to story, or character to character. In each of the tales, you get to experience the varying coping mechanisms we all have for grief, uh, whether it's already befell you, or, or in this case, while it's fast approaching. As always, I don't want to give away too much, but as someone who's been in Jackman's character's shoes, I can say that the movie does present challenging conclusions, but necessary ones. I suspect you'll take away from this movie exactly what you bring to it, and hopefully you can't relate to it at all, and you'll just see it for the visual feast that it is. But if you can relate, if grief has had its hooks in you in your life, then I really think you should give The Fountain a watch. It's a true piece of art and one that has a lot to say, if you're listening. And of course, you, you have to pay for it. <laughs> uh, you, could, you could email me. I'll find you a link or something. Maybe it's on YouTube. I don't know. But you should see The Fountain. I, I, I guarantee I'm not steering you wrong, folks. Well, we did it. Huh? We're wrapping up another roundup, lady. <laughs> Yes, your choice had way more shirtless Ryan Reynolds and is therefore a better movie. Yep, and I'm going to enjoy my weep fest. P please, please hand me my hanky. Once again, thank you all for joining us here at the Weekly Roundup. Episodes of this and all versions of Midnight Viewing can be found early and commercial free over at patreon.com slash fathermalone. If you have any questions or comments or anything at all, you can drop me a line at fathermalone71 at gmail.com. First one to do it gets it read on the air. This week over at Midnight Viewing, the Horror Anthology podcast, we are continuing our look at Tales from the Dark Side. We're going to be looking at two episodes from season one, the final two episodes from season one. Those are Grandma's Last Wish and The False Prophet. We'll see you there. Until next time, I'm going to leave you with a line from The Fountain. All these years, all these memories, there was you. You pull me through time.